Hi guys, today I have the first of two or three um, creepy pasta stories that I'm going to read to you in light of Halloween coming. I've also got um, some role plays on the way too, but those will be up a bit closer to Halloween. Um, and in the meantime, I hope that you enjoy this story, which um, was sent to me by Jarvis B. And I will have his Facebook page linked in the description box. I've only briefly read the first little bit, so I don't know what's going to happen, but um, hopefully it'll be uh, spooky. <laughs> and there's also lots of noise and construction outside, which hopefully isn't too distracting. That will kind of add to the air of um, fear. <laughs> so, um, without further ado, let's start. Stranded on a dirt road. This is WJBC News 98, your 24 hour news radio station, with the important news at the top of the hour and when it breaks. State officials have called off the search for an elderly couple who reported missing two weeks ago near Foothill Canyon State Park. The couple had reportedly gone camping for the weekend. Their RV was found abandoned in a nearby campground. Officials remain baffled and have asked for the public's help in finding this elderly couple. If you have any information regarding their whereabouts, please contact your local police. In other news, the County Wildlife Service has also reported an increase in animal poaching in the last three months. The county has had to dispose of several partially dismembered carcasses left by these poachers. County officials want to warn the public that they can be charged with the crime of wanton waste if they kill an animal and do not salvage all of its edible meat. Turn off that stupid radio, Abby. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know what I have been looking for, I yelled at Abby. I told you, you should have had your car serviced before we left on such a long trip. Okay, Laura Bell, I know, I know. Enough. We're gonna be a couple of sorry out-of-work nurses if we don't get our butts to Atlanta in two days. I reminded her, this is not a good start to our new career as nurses. Just a few months ago, we had graduated from the same hospital nursing program. We had gotten lucky and stumbled upon a recruiter from a major medical corporation who par practically hired us on the spot to work in a hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. We then sold everything that we owned to put down first and last month rent on a tiny apartment. We packed up everything and shipped it on ahead. Now it was all going to fall apart. If we don't show up for work in the next few days, this whole trip has been a disastrous miscalculation. The gas and food have all cost us double of what we thought. We spent the first two days of our trip sightseeing and lost so much time that way. And now, this. I turned to Abby. Look, I've tried everything that I know about cars. I made sure the connection to the car batteries are tight. I also checked all the hoses to make sure they are all attached and have no cracks. You check the oil and the water and they're fine. The car still does not want to move. Face it, we need help. Abby looked at me. What are we gonna do? Our cell phones are dead because my shitty cigarette lighter doesn't work. Look, I said. One of us needs to go for help while the other stays here with our suitcases and stuff. There's no one traveling this shortcut waitress at the truck stop bragged about. I waved my hand at the dirt road. Abby reluctantly nodded her head. The waitress had convinced us both that we could save hours cutting across using the shortcut. Now I'm glad we didn't tip her. Mostly because we were short on money. Abby put her hand on her forehead and exclaimed, crap. It's been at least 15 to 20 miles back to the truck stop in this heat. I looked up at the sky. The sun is starting to go down. It should cool down soon enough. Ivy looked up and stared at me. Okay, it was going. Only one way to be fair. We flip a coin. Abby immediately 
said, my call tails. Okay, I replied. I pulled a quarter out and flipped it. Oh my god, it's heads. I yelled out in joy. We both agreed that if someone were to pass by here, I would make them take me to the truck stop. Abby promised that she would walk to the truck stop and either call a tow truck or get the sheriff. Abby changed into her sneakers and put on her backpack. I gave Abby her last bottle of water, my green sun visor, and pointed her in the right direction. I watched her walk over the small hill and out of sight. The place we broke down was in the middle of some foothills. It seemed like a small valley. Nothing but trees and yellow grass until the next hill had... I went to the trunk and pulled out a blanket my grandmother had made for me and grabbed my purse. My grandmother was the one that raised me after my parents died when I was seven. My grandma was a widow by then. She worked for Holden's cafeteria chain back home for nearly 30 years. Between the both of us working and financial aid, I was able to swing nursing school. That's where I met Abby. She had been a medic in the army and was going through school on the GI Bill. Grandma was so happy for us when Abby and me got hired. I was hoping to convince Grandma to move down to Atlanta with me when she retired next year. I walked up a small hill near the car, put my blanket down under a tree to get some shade. There was a nice cooling wind blowing. I decided I would wait here until the sun went down, then sit in the car until help arrived. I used my purse as a pillow stretched out on the blanket. I was plum tired. We had been up since the crack of dawn and we messed with that stupid car over an hour. I need some rest. Shit, I sat up straight and opened my eyes to clear the night sky. To the clear night sky. What time is it? I must have fallen asleep. I raised my wrist to my face only to realize my watch must still be in the car. I took it off earlier to go over the engine. I looked down the hill to see the car was still broken down on the side of the road. I got up, picked up my blanket, and walked down the hill. As soon as I got to the car, I opened the door and grabbed my wristwatch off the dash. It had been three hours since Abby had left. I hope she gets help soon. I really don't want to spend the night here alone. I put away my stuff in the back seat. I got into the driver's side seat and locked all the doors. My stomach rumbled. I felt hungry. I looked in the back seat and found Abby's doggy bag for lunch. Yes! She only ate half her club sandwich. I was saving the other half for later. Well, guess what? It's later. Quickly unwrapped the sandwich and shoved most of it into my mouth. Yes, I know. Very unladylike and kind of a cold move, eating Abby's food. But she's not here and the sandwich will just go to waste and then no one would enjoy it. It was pretty good. It tasted better than my tuna salad on wheat. I had back in the coffee shop. Or maybe I was just so hungry that anything would taste good to me right now. I turned the car key, then flipped on the radio to listen to some music while I ate. There were only faint signals coming in. I could only tune in a new station in a country country station playing Drop, Kick Me Jesus through the goal post of life. I got frustrated and just turned the radio off. Great. Stranded with nothing to do. Finished up my sandwich and put the rused wrapper in the bag and tossed it into the back seat. I looked out the car window. This place was pitch black, even with the moon and stars. I looked around at all the surrounding hills. I then had an idea. If I can climb all the way up to the top of the hill I was sleeping on, I could maybe get a better view of the valley. I might spot a roadway or a house with their lights on. Something within walking distance. At least it would give me something to do. Might get us out of here sooner and back on the road to Atlanta. I took the keys out of the ignition, but left the car door unlocked just in case Abby came back before me. I once again walked up the hill past the spot I had taken a nap. I was surprisingly winded when I got to the top of the hill. I could see some of the small valley, but no car had lights or homes. I turned around and saw a bigger hill behind me a couple of miles away. Hmm, maybe I could get an even better view if I climbed that hill. I thought to myself, I might even find the highway and flag someone down or 
find an emergency call box. I walked down a small incline into a dense patch of trees. I stopped and rummaged through my purse for my nurse's pen light. Yes, I found it. It would not provide a lot of light, but it was better than nothing. The big hill was at least a few miles away. I began to walk through the trees headed for the hill. I then heard the distinct sound of a truck. The sound kept growing louder and seemed to be coming from behind me. It must be coming down the road where we broke down. I then heard a big bang and then a sound of a whimpering dog. I immediately ran out of the woods and back down the hill only to see the truck drive out of sight. No! I missed my chance of getting us out of here. I walked down the hill towards the car sat down on the side of the hill and just felt defeated. I hope Abby gets back soon. As I sat there, I started to hear a low-pitched sound. I looked around and saw nothing. Should I get back into the car? No telling what's out here at night. I thought to myself. I stood up when I heard a very distinct growling coming from some bushes. I could not see anything but the sound coming on closer I stopped moving and just stood frozen in place. I saw the outline of something coming towards me and saw a pair of yellowish eyes coming out of the darkness. The bright moonlight lit up a figure crawling on the ground. It appeared to be a coyote or a dog. It had a combination of light and dark fur. The shape of its head and its dark rimmed eyes kind of reminded me of a German shepherd. I could see that the part of the face was covered in something dark. It stopped crawling and it stood there, just shaking, like it was kind of cold. I started... It started to growl louder. After getting a better look at the stuff on its face, it looks like blood. Then it hit me. Oh my god. This dog must have been hit by the truck. That's why I heard a dog's whimpering after a bang. Oh, poor boy. No wonder it's shaking. It's probably really hurt. I walked slowly towards it. After all, it's a wild animal. I don't want to startle it. As I stepped closer, I began to notice it was a pretty big dog. It let out a very loud and deep bark. I stopped walking. It started to bare its teeth at me. Without breaking its gaze, it slowly began to move. I managed to sit up on its front leg then moved its left very long paw back and brought up its left leg, then slowly raised its itself upright onto its hind legs. First, I could not comprehend what I was seeing. This dog just got up on its four legs and stood upright like a man. It stood at least six feet tall, the beard to have blood on its fur all along the right side of its body. It held its right arm bent and close to its body as if injured. Its right leg was at an unnatural angle and appeared much different than the left. Its pointy ears moved back and it slowly started to crouch down as if it were about to attack. It leaped forward. I then heard a sound I only heard once while training as a nurse. The unmistakable sound of a bone breaking. The creature let out a scream, then fell to the ground. I ran back a few steps. Then it howled a very long and very eerie howl. I started to run up the hill. It saw me run and tried to move, but screamed out in pain. I got up to the top of the hill and into the patch of woods. I stopped and hid behind a tree. From my view, I could see the creature struggling to get up onto its feet. It would briefly stand, but as soon as he put any wick on his broken leg, it would fall back to the ground. It finally stopped struggling and laid on its back. I could hear it whimpering. I ducked back behind the tree and contemplated my next move. I didn't know what that thing was or how it came to be here. All I knew was that it was hostile and I needed to get far away from it as I could. I thought of running to the car. It might give me some protection from the dog man or whatever it was, but it's an older car with windows and the thing it even injured looks pretty strong. Plus, I don't want to be trapped inside, not knowing when help is going to arrive. My best bet would be to keep moving. Depending on its injuries, I might be able to outrun it. If I can cut through these woods and up the hill, I may make it out 
wait, of here. I checked my watch. Where are you, Abby? I then peeked around the tree to see how it was doing. To my surprise, it was gone. I came out from beyond the tree. My stomach sank. Was that thing just playing possum? The creature was not as injured as I had thought. Fuck. I immediately turned and began running through the woods. That thing is on the loose out here with me. Obviously got up without making a sound. Is it possibly intelligent? I got to get out of here. I stopped briefly to catch my breath. I leaned up against the tree and tried to see if I could see or hear anything chasing me. I didn't see or hear anything. I then caught the whiff of a strong odor. It was coming from straight ahead of me. I took out my pen light and shined it in the direction of the smell. I found part of a rotting corpse lying on the floor. There are flies all over it. I saw a partial ribcage, and as I flashed my light nearby, I saw a human skull with some of its flesh still attached. It was badly decomposed, but I could see it had a patch of hair on it that appeared either white or gray. I felt like throwing up due to the smell. I put my hand over my nose. This must be that thing's hunting ground. I then heard a loud howl come from nearby. That was too close. I began to run again. That hill must be further away than I had thought. It, seemed, it didn't seem to be getting any closer. I was running when I heard a howl come from somewhere ahead of me. I stopped and immediately changed directions. Oh god, how did that thing get in front of me? Did that thing figure out somehow that I was going for the hill? Is he trying to cut off my means of escape? Just to the right of me, I heard what sounded like trees falling. Something sounded like it was crashing through the forest towards me. I stopped in the middle of a small clearing and heard a sound of growling coming from behind me. As I turned around, the moonlight illuminated the battered figure of this ungodly creature. It stood there growling, bearing its fangs at me, not even being hit by a truck, slowed this thing down. It appeared to be dragging its broken leg behind it. Its yellow eyes shined in the dark. I felt the sweat start to form on my forehead. As I thought to myself, I would have to try and run for it. I then heard growling coming from the right and left of me. I saw two other sets of eyes come out of the darkness to join the creature. They were two other dogmen. The color of their fur and markings were different, but there was no mistaking they were the same species. When the dogmen howled earlier, he must have been calling out for help. The two dogmen appeared to be much taller and bigger than the injured creature. I almost got the impression that the injured one may have been their youngest brother, or the runt of the litter. My god, as I said, this, the three leaped forward toward me. I turned to run. No! Sheriff, this is Deputy Mills. You got your ears on. Over. I was on my way back from the O'Neill crime scene when I came across an abandoned car just a few miles up the road. The vehicle was unlocked. I had a look around and couldn't find the driver, so I searched the car and found some hospital documents. I found two diplomas from a county hospital nursing school for a Laura Bell Fowler and an Abby O'Neill. The name Abby O'Neill matches the identification we found on the body down the road. From the name of the registration, this must be the dead girl's car. No, that's a negative sheriff. I can't seem to find hide or hair of Miss Fowler. Miss Fowler. Could she be the one who maybe killed O'Neill then ran? I'm curious to see what the medical examiner identifies as a murder weapon. Poor girl was ripped apart by something razor sharp. Someone must have really hated that O'Neill girl to have done that to her. I'm gonna secure the vehicle and call a tow truck to have it taken to the police garage so we can conduct a more thorough search for the car later of the car later. Over. Sorry, Sheriff, say again, can you repeat that? Sorry, some damn dog was howling and I couldn't hear that last part. No negative, I don't need backup. I'll just wait for the tow truck, then I'll get back to the station, mills out. Hmm, that last house sounded awful close. Oh well, it's only a dog anyway. 